happen in here at Well, I, I just think our guys play with a little different uh, focus and, and energy level here at home, and obviously uh, draw a lot of that from our crowd. They've been awesome. Uh, you know, the crowds have been bigger each and every game out. So uh, we're thrilled to be back here, but the one challenge is to really pressure our guys into, well, not pressure, but challenge them to not just think because we're at home we're going to get a win. You know, we still have to prepare the right way, have our mindset. Uh, in the right manner, and, and that'll give us a good chance. But it's been neat to this point, but we still have a lot moving forward, and we've got to stay focused to that. I know you guys try to focus more on yourselves than what other teams do, but what are you seeing out of UCLA right now? Uh, you know, to be honest, we have just been looking at our last couple of games and how we need to improve uh, later on this afternoon and then heading in tomorrow. Um, we'll dive in. I know Coach Gottlieb's got that scout, though, and he's been watching them for a couple of weeks in preparation. Um, you know, they like to do some things in the full court defensively, the three-quarter court. Uh, they can shoot the ball. They want to play a little more up-tempo. They've got size and athletes inside as well. So it's going to be another challenging opponent as it is every time out in the Pac-12. Milestone for you guys, though, getting your first Pac-12 road win against Washington State. What did you learn from that game versus the loss to Washington? Well, I think the big thing was just the character that we showed. After, you know, losing to Washington the first uh, game of the weekend, we found a way to pull together and go into a tough environment in Pullman. They have a great crowd. Um, you know, we were a little short-handed with our roster, and uh, the guys just stayed together. We we focused on the defensive end, really controlled the tempo, which showed a lot of discipline. Uh, you know, and then what was neat is they made a little run, and we made free throws and that sort of thing that closed the game out. So, uh, great overall bounce back uh, on that second half. I know Victor Robin still has eight games until he can return. Who's been stepping up for you guys to fill that role? Well, you know, Jarmal Reed's played a lot more minutes uh, than normal, and uh, I think the combination of, you know, he we got Shea and Jai a couple minutes, even though they're different positions, it allows uh, Olaf to play a little more four so we can rest Daniel, and so those guys have really kind of chipped in, and, you know, we'll see Matt Dolan and, and Tanner Sanders and Dylan probably play a little bit more. Uh, Tanner played, uh, you know, in the Washington game. We went with Dylan uh, at Washington State, so... Those guys are having fun, and, and you know, the team just kind of seems to be responding. And could be a different guy on any night. Yeah, having Victor Robbins out, does that affect the team's mentality at all? Well, I, I think maybe that first game at Washington, just, oh, no, you know, that's our second leading score. Where are we going to go for our point production? And, you know, Vic makes some great plays for us on both ends, rebounds it. But then it was just kind of like, hey, this is what we have. Let's go find a way to win. And you guys really bought into that uh, against Washington State. You guys have held nine of your opponents to 35% shooting and five of them to just 30% shooting. So what has been working for you guys on defense? Well, I just think we do a really good job of getting the shooters. Uh, you know, we're keeping teams from driving, getting high percentage shots in and around the basket. Uh, and it's been, we've played a lot of zone lately, but it's been man, it's been 2-3, it's been some 1-3-1. One, one. Um, the guys know that if we want to have a chance to, to win, they have to defend. It's, uh, it's focus, it's energy, but it's communication too. And the communication part is probably where we've seen the most improvement, especially lately. What do you remember about the 2010 game against UCLA when you were still at Montana? It's a long ways back. Um, yeah, well, I, you know, to two totally different teams, but it was a thrill um, to take our Montana team into poly for the first time for our group uh, and to get a win against a, a really talented team. Uh, just was a big shot in the arm, was a marquee win for our program at that time. You know, and then we carried some momentum. I think we also uh, maybe won at Oregon that year, and I'm not sure if that's the year we won at home against Oregon State. That might have been 2011. But, um, and I believe that was an NCAA tournament team. So obviously we built some momentum for us that we carried all the way through the end of the season. These next couple of weeks, uh, Oregon State's recognizing Gary Payton, that 90 team, Jimmy Anderson. What does that mean to you to be, be able to bring those folks in and recognize them? Oh, it's great. You know, uh, it, it helps me, but our staff and, and the team, you know, uh, we're, we're all about uh, trying to teach accountability, and we don't think you can do that unless you have a connection to the past and to the history. Uh, and so to, to really recognize GP for, for the big night he had against USC, uh, you know, in the next month, uh, it'll be the you know 25th anniversary of, of Coach Anderson's Coach of the Year award, uh, and then that 89-90 team. Uh, it's going to be really fun to, to reconnect and to find out a little bit more, but then also have them get to know our team a little, uh, so that moving forward, our guys have a little better understanding of, of what Beaver basketball is all about. Where were you that winter, and what do you remember about Oregon State and, and Gary Payton at that time? You know, that was my rookie year. Uh, I was with the Sonics in uh, training camp. 
Uh, Sean Kemp was the other, one of the other rookies. We, we got to visit a little bit in Seattle. Uh, and then I, uh, after I got cut there out of camp, um, kind of traipsed around to Europe, back to the CBA. Um, and uh, I got married in the August of 89. So that was my rookie year. I was married. And I think I made a grand total of about $5,000 my rookie year. So it was a pretty humbling year. Man. But I do remember how Gil was rocking and, and, and what they were doing here. Um, you know, obviously making that splash on a national level was pretty neat. And, you know, I was well aware of that when, when I got interested in the job. You know, we knew of the pride and the tradition that was always here. 